Use the referral link in the description to G2A.com for all of your Xbox codes, PlayStation codes and video games and be sure to use the code CHEZ at checkout to get yourself 3% cash back. Hey guys, welcome to episode 7 of the Chelsea season here in the Achievement League. We're basically halfway through the season now, just over in fact, and we'll be uh, hopefully winning some trophies this year at Chelsea. We've already won the Community Shield, we're unfortunately out of the Carabao Cup. Although, that's certainly a competition we could win at other clubs later on in the in the save. So, we're hoping to win the Premier League if we can here at Chelsea. And potentially the FA Cup. And fingers crossed the Europa League as well. That is a, a trophy I would most certainly like to win this year at Chelsea. Because I think almost every other club we'll ever manage at in this save will be at Champions League level. So, we'll have to wait and see uh, what transpires by the end of the season. But in this episode, it's January transfer window time. We are going to be looking to bring in a new central midfielder. And I will try and do that before, most importantly, before the game against Arsenal. Uh, in fact, I think with Olivier Giroud having now left at the beginning of the window, we don't really have anyone else left to sell. Caballero and McEachran. So I can actually go out and buy someone now. Um, one thing that was actually very correctly point out, pointed out in the comment section, and one thing that I was kind of leaning towards at the beginning of the season, especially with this first season, at least, at Chelsea, because... We're obviously only spending one year at any given club. We can, at any given moment in time, go for someone that is 30 plus because we're not going to experience their horrific decline in stats because we're only going to be there for one year. So I am going to lean towards someone that's older in this window. More importantly, or to add to that, obviously someone like Saul... I'd rather spend a full season with someone like that rather than just the five months at the end of a year. So players like Saul and, and Thiago Alcantara and Adrian Rabiot, Leon Goretzka, I'd rather they grew a little bit more and also I'd rather have a full season with them. So players like that I am going to remove from the list. Won't be signing them at Chelsea, but there's absolutely no reason whatsoever why we can't sign them at a later date in a later club in a summer window. We may even end up managing one of the teams that they are at at some point in this save, of course. Miralem Pjanic, Radzan Angolan was one that I didn't even cross my mind, but actually it potentially would be a front runner. He's kind of drifted off the radar, hasn't he, since he went to Inter Milan. He's not had the best of times there, both on and off the pitch, more importantly off the pitch. Uh, Cruz is another good option. He's most certainly usable this year with his extra pace boost. He's 28 years of age, so not as old as any some of the others on the list. But Miralem Pjanic is a player that oh, I'm not sure about. I'm really not sure about him, so I'll remove him from the shortlist. So we're narrowing it down here to Nangolan, Hamsik, Rakitic, Kroos or Modric. Now look at Modric at 33. A was my prime target. B was one of the more popular suggestions in the comments section. And... Uh, C is the eldest, so I think I'm still going to go for Modric. I'm not going to spend, or I'm not, I'd rather not spend all 159 million because, of course, we had that unexpected, unintended boost to the finances when someone gifted me the um, the financial takeover. So what I'll do, I think I, I think I still want to go for Modric. I think I still want to go for Modric because we'll be replacing. Uh, Jorginho in the starting lineup, not Mateo Kovacic, which is uh, something that you guys have asked me to do. I think I am still leaning Modric, although he is going to be expensive. He's got a release clause of 120 million, which I'm certainly not willing to pay. Actually, ah, it won't let me go for Rajan Angolan. Right? Well, that was going to be my second option. So, can I? Will it let me? No, it certainly won't. Fine. I won't get Rajan Angolan then. Uh, Luka Modric. And then probably Rakitic after Modric. Because Kroos I could sign next season at whatever club we go to next season. And he'd still be decent. But someone like Modric or Rakitic I could go for now. And I am still going to prioritise Rakitic. No, I do not want to pay his release clause. Thank you very much. Thank you for all of your suggestions in the previous episode though. Uh, we had well over 150 comments of people suggesting players, the majority of which were those that were on my uh, shortlist already. Uh, we shall just offer a straight fee. Unless, will it uh, let me, will it allow me to use your Jorginho? It will let me trade Jorginho. I didn't think it was going to because obviously he's new at the club. We shall try and just straight up replace Jorginho. Jorginho plus 22 million. 
to be fair, is a pretty decent deal anyway. But we shall try Zuzino plus 14 and see if they'll accept. 16.3, deal done. Yes, he's 33, but he's still 90 rated, Luka Modric. What's he on a week? 300 grand, I think that said. Whew! 300,000 pounds a week. That's a lot of money. He wants Crucial. Yeah, yes, I think he would be starting every week. Luca, there's not any doubt about that. You'll be the second highest rated player in my entire squad behind um, behind Eden Hazard. Four years. They're happy with that, I'll be honest. Even though we're not going to be here at Chelsea, I don't think he'll play until he's 37. Might see him retire before then. And I've no idea what he's going to want wage-wise, so I shall offer 250 because he might be willing to take a wage cut to come to me. He alternatively might not. He is. He's just accepted it. So there we go. Luka Modric is into the starting lineup. Uh, but we're going to simulate this home game against Southampton in the league. We'll simulate Millwall. I want to play Arsenal. And because we're in the transfer window, we're only do only play two games. I want to play Arsenal. And I'm curious to see when the next round of the FA Cup is, provided that we beat Millwall. So I would very much like to play the next round of the FA Cup, which should be at the end of January. Should be. As it has been in real life, obviously, this past weekend, or this this current weekend, uh, it's uh, the FA Cup is ongoing. So, fingers crossed, the next round will be drawn for the end of the month and we'll be able to play that game. Because I'm presuming it would be a more difficult fixture than Millwall. Although, we could we could still come unstuck. Ryan Bertrand pulls one back for Chelsea. But, he says, hopefully... We are still going to get the win. Three points in the Premier League. Did Manchester City drop points? Right, so the game against Newcastle has been moved not once, but twice. It got moved once for their replay in the FA Cup. And it's been moved again because now the next round of the FA Cup has been drawn and we've Huddersfield Town. So I will play Arsenal. I will play Huddersfield. And then we'll simulate Bournemouth at the end of the month. And hopefully we can find ourselves top of the table. In fact, Manchester City have now played two games more than us. They were level on 47 points, having played 21 games. They've since drawn one and lost one. Opportunity beckons for us to go clear at the top of the table. Not just go top, but go clear at the top. However, we did lose last time we played Arsenal. So I am cautious. Cautiously optimistic, though. Let's see what we can do against Arsenal this time around. This right, Arsenal lineup. starting line up. Burnt Leno in goal. Bayerin, Koscielny, PK, Socrates and Kalashinats. In the midfield, Torreira and Ramsey. And then up top, Moses, Abamyang and Perotti. Okay. Surprised to see PK in there. And they've got Wanfran on the bench as well. But it was Danny Welbeck that ripped me apart last time we played Arsenal. So I'm kind of glad to see him on the bench. I can't believe I'm actually saying that because... Just personal footballing opinion. I've never really rated Danny Welbeck that highly. But he absolutely destroyed me. And Aubameyang might be about to do the same at the beginning. And he has done. The keeper just stands there and stares into space. Arsenal 1, Chelsea 0. That was not the start I was after at the Emirates. Not even close to the start I was after the Emirates. 2 minutes 24 on the clock. And Aubameyang's pace is just far, far too much. The keeper's got to at least try. It's not even that far past him. Well, that far away from him. He's just stood there and watched it. Come on, Kepa. You're better than that. Bamiyang to Torreira. Across the Bayerine. Big switch. Icardi's chasing it. Can't get there. Listen, that's to PK. In there to Torreira. Forward to Aubameyang. All back to Torreira. To Aubameyang again. To Torreira again. To Victor Moses. That is an outstanding goal. Undefendable, to be completely honest. That was unreal from Arsenal. They tore me apart in the first game against them, and they're just walking through my back line. I'm 2 0 down after 13 minutes. What on earth is going on? Why is Kepa come at that sideways? Ooh, I'm not sure about the goalkeeper right now. Lashinats, decent delivery. Torreira with a header. Ah, oh, Kepa can save something at least. Well, that's proven it to me. Hazard knocks it down to Modric. Willian's on the run. So we'll play it over the top to him. It's a lovely ball by Luca. Take that in his stride. We can't really. We are going to just twist back. Look for Ignazard at the back post. Look for a strange heading technique. Can't he will knock that down to Kovacic. 
Back to Kante again. Out to Azar. Quickly look for uh, Icardi. Can't find him. Modric looks for him and can't find him either. Kovacic looks for him and can't find him either. And we'll continue to go forward. Modric. Oh, I didn't quite go according to plan. Not having the best of times here against Arsenal. We didn't at Stamford Bridge. We aren't at the Emirates. Certainly my bogey team of the series so far. You never know. We may even end up managing them next season. Absolutely no idea what's going to happen with our job move at the end of the year. It depends what jobs are available in save and then what jobs you or what job singular you guys vote for at the end of the uh, at the end of the year because that is going to dictate what side we move to. Perotti on the run. Dave was with him. Oh, Perotti has just left me. That was outrageous. Similar to what Sterling did with, with City. It's just that this time Perotti kept it in. That's a foul and a free kick on the edge of the box. Things are not going well against Arsenal. Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang to take the free kick. Ramsey stood with him as well. Torreira's there as the third man, but Aubameyang is going to shoot. Oh, that's much better from Ke uh, Kepa. Oh, Ramsey, what a challenge. Aaron Ramsey, no, we'll get rid of it. It's going to be 2-0 at half-time unless we score on this counter-attack, which we won't do. We may even find ourselves going 3-0 down. Kante looks to step in once and misses both on the first occasion and the second. Into the box. Don't foul him. Don't give away a pen. It might drop for them yet. Oh, it still could. Perotti wide half-time. Oh, my Lord. Why can't I do anything against Arsenal? Willian. Oh, it's Riccardi. I see the run, and then we'll poke Eden Hazard through. Oh, he tried to take a touch and just stopped his, just stopped his motion, his movement, and broke his stride. <sighs> Could have played Eden Hazard all the way through there, and that would have been a superb way to get ourselves right back in the game. Meza Ozil's come on for the hosts oh, for the minute. I just can't break them down. I could deal with Meza Ozil on my team to help assist me for a couple of goals. Perotti into Aubameyang, around the corner to Meza Ozil, he might be assisting a goal for Arsenal, but no, Bayerian runs into a fellow Spaniard, and we have the ball back, right, counter attack then, go on Eden, not going to break stride this time, we'll try the Berber spin, that's worked superbly, ball there to Mated, Kovacic across to Luka Modric, on his second game, but the first time I've used him, and he's banged us back in the game, that's a really nice move, Really pleased with that. Hazard with a movement inside. Kovacic on loan from Real Madrid. Across the man, which is signed from Real Madrid. And into the back of the net. Luka Modric making the difference. But we need him to make even more of a difference. We're still trailing here. Kante just runs up to Ursula. Runs off with it. Breaks the tackle of Bellerin. Or Bayerine as well. Icardi. Willian ahead of me. And I see the run Kante was making, but I just can't get it to him. Give it there to Luca. Then go back to Willian. And around the corner to Matteo Kovacic. Oh, Matteo. You've got to keep that down. To Aubameyang. Across to Moses. He's looking to score against his former team again. Thankfully, we've been able to block the shot and deny him that opportunity. Kovacic will look quickly for Eden Hazard. And oh, the dummy very nearly worked. Koscielny almost falls, but able to react just in time. Seven minutes to go. It's a heavy touch by Kolasinac. We'll win it back with Willian. Just make sure we keep possession for the time being and then look to come down this left-hand side again. Marcus Alonso. I'm actually going to drill that to Willian. Look quickly for Icardi. I need Nazard's on the run, but there's so many Arsenal defenders around me. It's Luka Modric. Modric perhaps again. Oh, Bernd Leno with a superb save. Superb stop. Eden Hazard with the corner. It's a good whip. Modric could be up for the header. PK wins it. Wouldn't let me change to Thiago Silva initially. Please tell me you were on side there, Eden. Yes, he was. Barkley. Haller. Willian even back to Modric. Good save again by Leno. Luka Modric trying everything to try and give us a point here against Arsenal. Marcus Alonso could be up for this, but Leno comes to punch and it'll drop to Danny Welbeck. And he might be the man to see the final seconds waste away. As P, no foul. Oh, I just need to keep possession there. We will get it into Willian. And across here to Eden Hazard, who could duck back. Eden, oh no, it might drop to Luca. It has, but it's over the bar. And it's going to be a 2-1 defeat to Arsenal. They've beaten me again. I can't beat Arsenal. Thankfully, we have two games in hand on Manchester City. So we do still have the opportunity to go above them in the Premier League. But my lord, I am so infuriated that I can't seem to beat Arsenal no matter what I do. 
on aggregate, that's 4-1 to them over the course of two games. Wagner's gone up a rating. That's taken the edge off it, but still, that's incredibly frustrating. I do want to play the game in the FA Cup, so I want to ensure that we go further in that competition. But we just have to... Oh, trust for Ross Barkley. I'll be rejecting that. Sorry. I do want to ensure that we go further in the FA Cup. But at the same time, I want to, I want to make sure that we go um, above... City in the league. I'm going to take Ruben Loftus-Cheek off the bench. Uh, oh no, Zuzini was used in the move, wasn't he? That's why he's not there. Luka Modric will uh, obviously retain his starting lineup. For some reason, my brain told me that I hadn't used Jorginho for the move and I could have just put Jorginho on the bench. But obviously, I used him as part of the make weight to uh, make Luka Modric a little bit cheaper for us financially, which I didn't think I was going to be able to do, to be completely honest. Right, Huddersfield Town next in the FA Cup. And then Bournemouth in the Premier League. What I might do, actually, is use... Oh, Henry King's gone. Okay, fine. What I might do is play with the rotation side. So I've not actually done that yet. Play with this team so that the uh, first team is fit and available to play against uh, Bournemouth in the simulation game. I just want to take Thiago Silva out of that team now. And put David Luiz back in now that he's fit. Right. Let's go and play Huddersfield Town and, fingers crossed, get ourselves through to the next round of the Cup. But I am going to have to play better than I did against Arsenal. Right, Huddersfield's starting lineup looks pretty strong. Not necessarily 100%. Kasper Dolberg up top alongside Steve Mounier. You've got five at the back, similar to Arsenal. Winks, Llorente and Moy in the midfield. It's a decent team, Huddersfield. They can, on occasion, if they play to their absolute maximum potential do a job on you. So we are going to have to be wary, especially considering I'm not starting my full strength side. Flicked on well by Dolberg. And Munier will look to turn. David Luiz stands him up. Llorente, nice tackle by David Luiz. Forward there to Morata. Oh, it's a terrible pass from Alvaro. But he'll get the opportunity to perhaps get on the end of a cross from Eid Nazard, who's racing away from Aaron Moy here. And will cross the ball in. And Morata is there with a the diving header. Lursel bats it away and it won't quite drop for Gilmore. It's done really well to get on the end of that, actually. Thanks forward to Casper Dolbo. They might have something to say before the end of this first half here, Huddersfield. Playing the ball about really nicely. And Moy has Chandler in space on that left-hand side. Zappacosta tackles him with that. A corner or a goal kick? Well, here's a it is a corner. 30 seconds left in the half. Aaron Moy to deliver. It's decent. Mounier's there. Flicks on. Kepper saves. And Gilmore will just hack away. Well, they've had nothing to do offensively, Huddersfield, all day so far. And then right at the death, they very nearly steal a 1-0 lead. And Mounier's done brilliantly to keep that in. I was certain that was gone out. Llorente turns. And they might yet have something to say before the end of this first half. Harry winks into the middle. And Christensen heads away this time. And now the referee will blow his half-time whistle. Oh, hearing me. Zappacosta inside. Nice at 1-2 with hudson Adoy and Gilmore. And Morata gets that down and under control and turns. But can't get the shot away. It's been the story of my game so far. I keep getting the ball into dangerous areas. But they just can't, for whatever reason, get a shot on goal. Whether it's the individual player's lack of strength, or there's no need for that, Angolo, or great last-ditch tackles like that, I just can't get shots on goal. Why Angolo can't have went for that fancy pass? I've no idea. Is that a foul in my favour? No, apparently it's not. Things are not going my way in this one. Really struggling against Huddersfield. Kovacic down the line to Azar. Inside to Alvaro Morata. It's just been challenge. woeful. Morata is just terrible. Really struggling with him. I'm going to have to bring on uh, Icardi and then William for hudson Adoy. I've been very, very unimpressed with Callum hudson Adoy. I expected in, much in, better in, and hoped for much better. Kovacic back there to Angolo Kante. Oh, forward to Ruben Loftus cheek Looking for Alvaro Morata, who I think was onside oh, just... And was offside just. See, I only just realised. You see all the hands go up from the defenders. It was borderline. We'll have a look at the replay. I was praying that he was just onside. We're not going to get a chance to look at the replay, are we? No. Nope. Okay, fair enough. Well, he was offside. The last thing he does is put the ball in the back of the net. But it won't count. And we stay at nil-nil. Now, can Maro Icardi make an instant impact? Oh, very nearly. Very, very nearly. Right. Moy off for them. Another good corner for us. Hazard with the ball in. Icardi flicks it on! Roof of the net only. Corner for Huddersfield. 13 minutes from time. 
still nil nil. Not as she, I'd say clears, but doesn't. Gets a foot to it is the most I think you could call that. Chandler will turn and then whip the ball into the middle. Kovacic heads it up to Icardi. Doesn't really get away with the ball. Icardi forward to Kante. William, make me the run. He's gone. Please take this in your stride, William. Oh, he had to break stride, but he's accelerated away. Willie Real. And we'll pull it back. And Kante, 1-0 Chelsea at the death. Finally, we've gotten ourselves in front on the counter-attack from a Huddersfield opportunity. We get ourselves in front. This has been a slog to get the lead here away from home against Huddersfield Town. And I thought with this touch from Willian, it was very heavy. I'd overrun it. But pulling it back, Kante's there. Substitutions have made the difference there. Kante thankfully has the stamina to last at the end of the game. And Willian's extra pace certainly made the difference there to get away from the Huddersfield Town back line. And that will be, I'd like to think, game over. Just a matter of seconds remaining now at the Kirklees between us and a hard-fought, I think is probably the best way to phrase it, hard-fought win in the FA Cup against Huddersfield Town. They gave everything there. The players that came off the bench were what we needed. We needed that extra little bit of quality that we didn't have in the first half and Willian provided it. Just that extra little bit of pace that we didn't have in the first half and Willian provided it. Now, the next round of the FA Cup will be drawn outside of the window. So, I'm not sure who will have it. So, you've got Huddersfield again tomorrow. Uh, Manchester City and Tottenham also tomorrow. So, it's going to be a very, very important episode tomorrow. We're going to have to make sure that we get the victory here against Tot uh, against Bournemouth. And to be fair, I may I may actually play that just to try and ensure that we do. I don't want to run the risk of simming it and losing it. Because I believe it's away from home. Edwards doing having a really good month, a uh, really good uh, training session there. Right, if it's Bournemouth, I don't believe it is away as well, actually. Is it Bournemouth away? Even if it's a home, I'm pretty sure I'm going to play it. Pedro, an offer for him again. We shall reject. Thank you. He's going nowhere. Prize money. Oh, 200 grand. Don't spend that too quickly, shall we? Uh, it is away. I'm going to play this. I can't I can't risk not toppling City at the top. We need to go to 50 points here. Because if we go level on points with them, our goal difference is plus 10. Oh, sorry. I was looking at Everton's. Our goal difference is plus... 22 and there's just plus 24 so a draw is not enough to go top we need to win this and get goal difference back in our favor or at the very least just have our points tally higher than cities to then fingers crossed get our goal difference higher later down the line just in case we slip up against them in the next episode as well oh bournemouth away who historically have been a bogey team of mine in career mode but arsenal appear to be that team in this save so fingers crossed bournemouth should be more straightforward this time around Bournemouth starting lineup: Begovic in between the sticks, Rico, Ake, Cook, and Cresswell at the back. David Brooks, Cook, Lerma, and Gray on the left, with Donis at centre forward and Munir up top. Winnable game. Well, I've said that before and come unstuck. Oh, Modric steps in. He's done superbly well there. And it's into Willian. Hazard's making me a good run. I'll. Poke him through and around the corner. Here's Mateo Kovacic. You guys wanted him to stay in the starting lineup, and that's exactly why. Chelsea won, Bournemouth nil. We're going to celebrate. Where are our fans? They're that far side, aren't they? Let's go and run with them. We'll go and celebrate with them. Here we go, boys. Chelsea won, Bournemouth nil in the tenth minute. You want is Jorginho replaced in the starting lineup, not Mateo Kovacic. It appears you guys were correct. Bit back towards Minier. That's a decent delivery. Moving all over the place. That Hazard. Oh, whoo, that's naughty. Absolutely disgusting for me now. I did try and flick it. I didn't envisage it going like that. But he's done brilliantly. And Hazard will look across for Luka Modric and find him well. And it's a good block by the defender. And then a subsequent save by the keeper to his sure we don't score. William with the delivery. Rudiger's going to be underneath this. Begovic with the save. Back into the middle by Thiago Silva. And away by Demarai Gray. It's Rico Brooks to Cook. Patience is the name of the game at the Cook moment. With space, Lewis Cook Should whoops really in a de decent position. ball, but is he enough away. for the defender to get rid of? And Golo Kante, Willian itching to get in behind. I seem to remember Lewis Cook scoring a tremendous goal against me last time we played Bournemouth. Memory serves. That's going to drop kindly for... Oof! Maro Icardi put everything behind that. Stood there and swung a leg at it, but unfortunately rifled it just past the post. 
Picardi. Modric is the guy that's itching and galloping away. Get it into Icardi. That's a lovely run by Mateo Kovacic, who turns well. Back to Icardi, who will finesse it via a defender's leg out for a corner. Oh, really good move, that. Icardi at the near post. It will drop to him. We'll lay it back. Luka Modric. Good save. We win that header. We can't. It'll drop to Mateo Kovacic. Oh, that would have been a thumping finish. But it's wider the target. Looks around the corner. Munir might get to that. And he has done. Oh, SP. Modric. Out to Willian. Kovacic is there. There's Hazard and Icardi. Look for Modric. Back inside. And a lovely run if I can find him here from Mateo Kovacic. who's in again. It's going to drop kindly for Icardi. It's a very narrow angle. Has I tried his best there? I didn't press anything. He just threw himself at it. We are in the 93rd of 92 minutes at the minute. Rudiger could win this header. It's going to drop out from Priovic to Thiago Silva. Well, it's the last action of the game. So if Thiago Silva scores for a 35-yard whipper, then we certainly deserve the victory. But a victory is what we shall get regardless. A 1-0 win against Bournemouth. I would have loved to have beaten Arsenal as well and gone further clear at the top of the Premier League. But at the top of the Premier League is where we find ourselves at the end of the month of January. We'll finish the transfer window and just simulate away. Not looking to make any more deals at this stage. And for now, we'll transfer for Andreas Christensen from Barcelona. I don't know, Barcelona might be a club we end up at next. Aro Ricardi is very happy. I'm also very happy because we are two points clear at the top of the Premier League. Right, let's get this window finished, shall we? £50 million pounds spent so far. Rephrase. £137 million pounds spent so far on deadline day. £200 million pounds spent so far on deadline day. Everyone's been pretty busy so far. And then just £5 million spent in that hour. Well, that brought us back down to earth with a bump, didn't it? Uh, hello. What? Bail T. Ventus. Bail T. Ventus. Bail. Gareth. 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 Gareth Bale to Juventus is what's just happened there to see that jump up. Marcello to Bayern Munich, Immobile to Tottenham, and Gareth Bale for £72.9 million to Juventus. £400 million spent, almost nothing spent in hour five, and only a million pounds spent in hour six. Okay, it seems to have died down now that that Bale move has gone through. We got a big shock there as that figure just flew up. And to be fair, we might have had one other sizable deal go through maybe two let's have a look and see what everyone in the in the premier league did florenzi in arsenal as well as gamera iwobi and willock out donis priovic and mexa in at bournemouth donis priovic just played against this origi in at uh, brighton and bong out ali sami or ali sami in at burnley alongside kuya churl and morrison with ward goodmanson defort and loton leaving Radoja, Zapata and Stark in Cardiff with Gunnison, Nikuele, Manga leaving. We obviously signed Modric and Jorginho left. Christian Fuchs and Vermaelen in at Palace with Kelly leaving. Halstenberg, Zobnin and Glick in at Everton with Schneiden in leaving. Samata Defoe and Herrera in at Fulham with Cabano on his way out. Llorente and Antonio in at Huddersfield. Llorente played against us in that FA Cup game. Pedraza and Alabdalawi in at Leicester with Chilwell, Fuchs and Benalawane leaving. Fernandez and Mbolo in at Liverpool with Origi, Sturridge, Milner, Moreno leaving. Grimaldo and Benatia in at City with Stones going out. So Benatia or Benatia uh, replacing the outgoing John Stones. Marcus Rashford sold from Manchester United. Mubanzi in as well as Masuaku at left back for Newcastle. Carl Dalo on his way out. Jason and Rodriguez in at Southampton. Bertrand uh, on his way out. Scored against us at the beginning of the month of January, of course. Ryan Bertrand. Immobile in at Tottenham with Rose, Wanyama and Lamella out. And Sural, Nguete and Kittel in at Watford. West Ham signed Lustenberger, Lasagna and Martinez with Arnautovic, Masuaku and Antonio leaving. Wolves have spent nearly 50 million. Bentelab, Lato and Pione Sisto. Pione Sisto, a decent winger. Not looking forward to playing against Wolves next time around if he's going to be on the wings. New squad monthly report. That'll come in handy. How's everybody doing? 58 to 74. No. 83 to 94, 83 to 89, 73 to 81. So no, 83 to 89. Vegas, 75 to 93. Still looking promising-ish. Uh, 74 to 92 is good. 83 to 94 is good. The youngsters look decent. Are we going to be adding to that? 64 to 84 is a no. That's a no. That's a maybe. That's a maybe. We'll give that one more month. That's a no. 
That's a maybe. We'll give that one more month. That's a no, and that is a no. Of course, we could call all of these guys up, or probably will call all of these guys up, into the first team at Chelsea before we leave to ensure that the save is, you know, getting high rated first team or high rated regens thrown into the mix uh, here at Chelsea so that we can potentially sign them later down the line. 80 to 94 potential. That's a, a certain sign straight away. Hmm. I'm going to say no to him, and we'll say no there as well. Okay, and then the final one is England. Henry King has gone to... Who on earth is that? I have no idea. 76-94, Aidan Turner. We'll give that one more month. 66-90, uh, we'll give that another month. 60-82. to 82. Uh, What's his current valuation? I'm just trying to... Yeah, we'll give that another month. 73-94. to 94. Although his current valuation is quite low so he doesn't look like he's going to be that good and we'll re reject Billy Turner as well so we are going to be flooding the uh, the save with high rated young talent or high potential young talent and by the time we get six or seven seasons in at our sixth or seventh club we'll be able to have a number of high rated youngsters that we can perhaps pick off and you never know, we may see some of those names again later down the line. Currently top of the table, Eden Hazard currently top of the top goal scorer list as well. And actually, City have played another game and drawn it. So they've drawn two and lost one of their last three games. We will have the opportunity against Huddersfield to extend the lead at the top of the table to four points. We do then play City before we play in the Europa League and then Tottenham. So what we'll do, we'll probably play City, sim that first game. And play Tottenham and then maybe play the second leg against Aves as well to uh, hopefully see ourselves through to the next round of the Europa League. Although I would imagine we will win the first leg of that Europa League tie anyway. But we shall wait and see. But for now, thank you very much for watching. Drop the video like if you enjoyed. Make sure you subscribe to the channel too. There'll be an episode of the Crimode RTD later on this afternoon as always. And I'll see you.